Well, good morning. It is a beautiful day that God has given us to come together virtually this morning. We uh, are broadcasting today from Pleasant View United Methodist Church. Uh, next Sunday's broadcast will come from uh, Mount Cora United Methodist Church. Uh, in the way of announcements, I just have uh, one uh, new announcement, and that is that uh, our church conference has issued some new guidelines based on the state recommendations. Um, the uh, uh, bishop has instructed us as pastors and as in our church leadership to prepare for a possible opening uh, May 24th for our regular face-to-face uh, -face in person services But there are three phases in uh, reopening our churches uh, and depending on the state guidelines uh, will make a difference on when actually we are able to open our doors uh, phase one still involves groups of 10 or less. So as long as we're in phase one, we will not uh, be meeting uh, in person for worship. In phase two, uh, we will, it, it's for groups of 50 or less. So we anticipate being able to reopen our in-person services at that time. But uh, there are some severe restrictions on what we're going to be able to do uh, in terms of uh, there will not be Sunday school held. We will not have uh, children's programming or nurseries during the service other than our children's message, uh, which instead of having the children come forward for that, we'll be doing that in the pews. Um, there are some restrictions restrictions and recommendations about wearing masks and uh, and other things but as this uh, begins to unfold we will make sure we keep in touch I will go ahead and, and uh, Nancy and I will make sure we get those guidelines out to you so that you're uh, acutely aware of what those are and just rest assured that we will begin our uh, services in our buildings uh, as soon as it is safe to do so. We don't want to put anyone at risk. Feel free to uh, call myself, call the office uh, if you have questions about any of this, and we'll do our best uh, to be able to answer those for you. Anything you have this morning, Nancy? Okay. Our opening hymn is A Shelter in the Time of Storm.
God, our guide and guardian. You have led us apart from this busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall resign into your hands the tasks which you have committed to us. So may we worship you not with our lips at this hour, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. It is that time of our service when we take our joys and concerns to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we definitely have a joy this week. I got a message from Alicia this morning and uh, Emma, who we were praying for uh, last week, who had broken her arm on a trampoline, went to the doctor this week. Uh, they were expecting to possibly have to do surgery to reset and pin it together. Uh, the doctor was able to reset her arm without surgery, and uh, she's going to be wearing a cast for one week, and then they'll be rechecking to make sure everything's still in place. But at this point, it looks like uh, no surgery for Emma. So prayers answered there. Thanks be to God. Um, we also today want to lift up, I read yesterday about a veteran's home somewhere in our country where they have had 70 deaths due to the COVID-19 virus. Um, and uh, uh, we definitely want to lift up the families and also the other residents of that facility who have lost friends and comrades and, uh, and folks that are very near and dear to them. Also continue to lift up the Mennonite Memorial Home uh, and all the other nursing homes in the area, the Meadows and Lipsick, and uh, uh, of course, uh, Maple Crest and Willow Ridge and uh, uh, Kilty Memorial Home uh, in our area here. Also, uh, you will have an opportunity during our prayer to lift up those things uh, that are weighing on your hearts today or those joys that you might experience have experienced uh, in this past week. Nancy, anything from you this morning? Emily? Okay. Our prayer hymn this morning is the Spirit Song, and I think this is one uh, maybe that you won't need the hymnal for.
Oh, healer of Galilee, you are afflicted in the sufferings of your people <coughs> and are full of compassion and tender mercy. Hear us, we pray, for those who suffer, for all who suffer trauma in mind or body. For those whose livelihood is insecure, the overworked, the hungry, the homeless, and the destitute, for those who have been downtrodden, ruined, and driven to despair. For the little children whose surroundings hide them from your love and beauty, for all the fatherless and motherless, for those who have to bear their burdens alone, and for all who have lost those whom they love. For those who are in doubt and anguish of soul, for those who are oversensitive and afraid, <coughs> <coughs> For those who suffer through their wrongdoing. For those whose suffering is unrelieved by the knowledge of your love. Set free the helper, helper of the weak, the souls of your servants from the restlessness and anxiety. Give us the peace and power that flow from you. Keep us in all perplexities and distresses, in all griefs and grievances from thy fear, from any fear or faithlessness, that being upheld by your strength and stayed on the rock of your faithfulness through storm and stress, we may abide in you. We now pray as our Savior has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Nancy. Once again, uh, I received a report this week. We don't have <clears throat> a bulletin for our uh, folks, obviously, uh, who are joining us uh, online, but um, the giving, I am told by our treasurers of our two churches, has continued to be nothing short of amazing. And uh, it's humbling to have two churches who realize how important it is that we continue our ministry. And uh, I just want to again say thank you to all of you who are continuing to send your uh, tithes and gifts and offerings to us. Um, and, and the other thing that this will do for us is just make it so much easier when we have to start up again with our in-person ministries and not be uh, terribly in the hole from uh, financially from not being able to meet our obligations. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for your generosity and your continued support of our ministries for both Pleasant View and Mount Cory United Methodist Churches. <clears throat> and I think <clears throat> there, this past week there's been a lot of focus in the news media in different places from people who are complaining about how things are. And uh, I think uh, we need to count our blessings. And so... Uh, if you have this, Nancy, I'd like to go ahead and sing our praise God from whom all blessings flow. Before we begin our children's message, we're going to be singing our pray, uh, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, one verse. Feels good to sit these old bones down. We, uh, I think you're gonna, I think our uh, young people are going to enjoy the message for today. <clears throat> and I have something I want you to do at home, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna say some popular uh, phrases, some popular sayings from people in different. Uh, from different characters from movies. And then I'm going to say one from a real person. And we'll see if you can tell who has said these different things. And I want you to do something, even from home today. If you think you know the answer, don't raise your hand. I need you to ba like a sheep. Okay, think you can do that? Just ba <coughs> whatever, however you think a sheep should sound. 
So I'm going to read the phrase, and if you know who it is, bow like, bow like a sheep. Okay, here we go. To infinity and beyond. Well, I guess there's probably some buzz out there for that one. Who was that? Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. How about this one? Some people are worth melting for. <laughs> I hear some bass here too. Well, obviously that one's from Olaf in Frozen. How about this one? This one might be for our younger ones, maybe a little tougher. Just keep swimming. <laughs> Who was that? Dory. Dory, absolutely, from Finding Nemo. They were in the current. Okay, how about this one? This one, even our older members of the congregation should know this one. Me want cookie. <laughs> you figure that one out? Well, it's Cookie Monster, of course, from Sesame Street. Now this one, may we may have to have some of our really older children uh, to, uh, to figure this one out. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. <laughs> Boy, we got 100% over here. We got, uh, that, of course, is Mary Poppins. Very good. Now, I got to ask you, was that easy or was that hard uh, to guess those things? Uh, how, how could you be sure of who it was that said those things? You had to be pretty familiar with the movie uh, and the character to match what they're saying with uh, the person who's saying it. If you had never seen the movie Finding Nemo, you might not know that Dory says just keep swimming. But if you've seen Frozen like some of us have like a hundred times, uh, then uh, you could guess Olaf really easily. The more you know a movie and the characters, the better that you know the voice. And uh, I have one more uh, voice for you to guess. And if you know this one, I want you to go ahead and buy like a sheep if you know who said this. Love each other as I have loved you. Okay, did we hear any buzz out there? I got another one here. We got, uh, uh, that of course was Jesus. Now Jesus isn't a cartoon character. He doesn't fly with an umbrella, but he's a good shepherd that takes care of us. Jesus says that his sheep know his voice and follow him. So now you get why we had you buy on like sheep today. We always need to listen to what Jesus says about how we should live our lives. And uh, even though we don't know, we, you know, we may not have seen a movie with Jesus in it, although you may have seen a cartoon or some other things uh, with him, uh, we know that we need to listen to him. And we do know a lot of the things that he said because it tells us those in the Bible. So let's always try and do what Jesus tells us to do. So let's take a minute to pray. Dear God, thank you that you help us hear and know Jesus' voice. We want to follow you today and always like the sheep of your pasture. Be with all these young people who have come to join our service this morning. Bless them with good health, with joy, and with all good things. Keep them safe in this coming week and bring them safely back here next Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Our scripture for today comes from Acts, the second chapter, and we're going to read verses 42 through 47, and I am reading from the New International Version this morning. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. These are the very words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The disposal and distribution of possessions in the early church was directed among all uh, as anybody had need for them. Uh, this is where I think our, the, those who perpetuate the modern prosperity gospel and theology fall on their faces. When a physical or spiritual need became known in the early church, action was taken to address it. The same should be true in today's church. If we're about the right stuff, John, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 17 addresses this, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? And then looking on to verse 18 of 1 John 3, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. New Testament believers all through the history uh, of our church have demonstrated their love for one another self-sacrificially. And you know what? The, the, the true believers uh, continue to do that to this day. I want to take this section of scripture that we read this morning and break it into four parts. There are four things in uh, which new believers in the early Christian church were trained. And I'm talking about by the disciples were trained. Uh, and uh, first was they were trained in the apostles' doctrine. They, they, they wanted to make sure that everybody understood the message of Jesus Christ the same way so that uh, the message that they were taking out into the world was the same. It was consistent. They just wanted to make sure that everybody was preaching a consistent message. This was grounded in the eyewitness testimony of his followers. In other words, they had actually, uh, one of the things that sets our church apart from some other churches is the early uh, scriptures are actually, in the New Testament, are actually written by people who personally knew Jesus uh, and walked with him and talked with him and witnessed the things that happened that are written uh, in those scriptures. 
and we have those because of our uh, Bibles that we're able to, that everybody's able to get these days. Uh, we're able to carry that around with us. This, so, uh, doctrine, the Jesus word, is the first thing the disciples wanted people to know. The, the good news of Jesus Christ. Second, uh, the new believers were trained, it said, in the breaking of bread. This is very important uh, in terms of being a Christian. And this is most likely a reference to the Lord's Supper. That's another aspect of our faith that is just unique among our, our uh, Christian brothers and sisters. And, uh, and it makes us unique from other uh, groups, social or otherwise, in our society. We receive God's grace through the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. Uh, or you can call it the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist. Those are all acceptable terms for that. The word Eucharist means celebration, and it's definitely a celebration when we can share together in the body and blood of Jesus. Um, and uh, we celebrate Jesus' shedding of his blood uh, to pay the price for our sins. So we have, uh, we have uh, scripture, the word, and the, the uh, breaking of bread, two, two of the things. Third, the new believers were trained in the discipline of prayer. This is so important. And I don't think uh, our churches, meaning uh, the church today and the greater church, uh, I don't think we do that enough. And as Christians, I don't think we do that enough. Corporate prayers are considered an essential part of the spiritual growth of a church. Wonders and signs from heaven were apparently given by the Lord to the apostles to validate their uh, ordained position, ordained by God, of course, and to verify the truthfulness of their witness to the church. As our churches grow today, we need to keep that in mind. We need to... Uh, these four means of being a better Christian, to being a Christian, uh, used by the apostles to train. This we're talking about, as they went out and preached, there were thousands at a time, sometimes groups of 3,000, who were converted to Christianity by the apostles. Uh, and so they had to have a good system in place to make sure that all these people were being trained, that this wasn't just some kind of haphazard uh, means of getting people to become Christians. It speaks to the power of the doctrine that we take from the scriptures, fellowship to hold each other accountable and support each other in our faithful endeavors, the sacraments to allow us to celebrate our identity as faithful, and to practice what Billy Graham called the greatest power this side of heaven, the power of prayer. New believers were also trained in fellowship. This week, I heard uh, in, in the, uh, I guess you call it the heat of uh, our social distancing, I heard, we, I heard a mother, a young mother reach out uh, in a, a kind of a cry for help or a, a sharing of others, saying that she was fearing, feeling, uh, had this feeling of failure over a rough day of quarantine with her small children. As that happened, I began immediately to feel our church family surrounding her with love and encouragement through their words. And I'm sure if this problem had was more than just temporary, which I don't believe it was, 
there, there would have been, uh, our folks would have been following through with their actions. That's what the fellowship of believers really does. We learn together. We discuss together. We help others together. And we help each other together. And I have seen this repeatedly over the last almost six years that I've spent with our two churches. We furnished, I don't know how many meals for folks in need, Christmas gifts, uh, uh, a bookmobile to help uh, children learn how to read. Uh, just, we could, I could go on and on with the things that our churches have, have come together to provide for people uh, in need as uh, a, uh, a social, um, uh, emotional support uh, dog that we had a fundraiser for. Uh, uh, blankets and tools uh, through church world service, uh, missionaries in Alaska, missionaries in Mexico and other parts of the country um, that have been provided through our churches and through the generosity of our people. This coming together is just so important for churches and it's what makes us different than uh, a lot of social type groups. None of these four things is going to go out of style. Today we're going to focus specifically on that fellowship aspect. We need to take care of one another, first of all, or none of us will have the emotional or uh, uh, physical strength to be the church. So we have to take care of each other. But our responsibility doesn't end there, and a lot of churches... Uh, make that mistake. They think we, we're taking care of our own body, we're okay. Our own church, we're okay. Jesus expects us to follow his example, and that is to care for those who have difficulty caring for themselves. Those people include the homeless, the hungry, the sick, the elderly, the stranger, the lonely, those in prisons, and everyone else who society has turned their backs on. We need to look at who Jesus spent his time with. In addition to the apostles who he was teaching and training, he spent time with lepers, the blind, the lame, and people like Mary Magdalene, the woman of the night who was possessed by seven demons who he rescued from being stoned to death. We can't call ourselves Christians if we refuse to become actively involved with society's outcasts. Back in Jesus' time, there was no Medicaid. There was no government or public assistance. There was no temporary assistance for needy families. Do you know who filled that role in those days? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't the government. The church filled that role. The same was true in John Wesley's time. Preventative medicine was pretty much unknown. People were treated when they got sick and if they had the means to pay for their care and treatment. John Wesley realized that people couldn't focus on their faith if they were sick or suffering. So he studied and he wrote what amounts to a medical book featuring the common medical practices of the day. You can buy it today. I got on Amazon the other day and it's on there. It's called The Primitive Physic, an easy and natural methods uh, of curing most diseases. He knew that the poor had no way of paying for a doctor to treat their illnesses. So he decided that if the poor were going to be treated and get better, they'd have to treat themselves. This book includes not just medical information, but it includes nutritional information. It includes treatments for common diseases and includes all kinds of information. When you read it now, it seems kind of, kind of primitive. It really does. That was probably a good title for it. But at the time, this was the state of the art medicine that Wesley was trying to make sure wasn't just for the rich, that everybody would have access to that. And he even provided supplies and other things 
uh, so that people could do that. Wesley believed that the church needed to fill the gaps that the government wouldn't, and it still does. I have to tell you this morning that I think about those little children in cages down in America's Southwest and those children who are refugees over in Syria and the countries around there and how they're starving to death by the thousands and my heart aches for them. I would love to be able to, to alleviate their fear and their suffering. Uh, whatever or whoever put them there, it wasn't their fault. Whether it was a parent, whether it was a circumstance, whether it, whatever it was. You see, children are always the innocent victims. We, they're, they're never the ones who cause their plight, and yet they're always the ones who suffer the most and have the least control over their environment. The thing that haunts me continually is that I know there are ways to help those children, uh, and I have not come up with them yet, and that bothers me 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have two jobs as Christians. And this is Jesus' own words. To love God and love our neighbor. Jesus said those are the two greatest commandments when he was asked. We have to remember and be willing to recognize that the church's number one job is taking care of the last, the least, and the lost. Otherwise, we're not being the church. At least not the church that Christ intended us to be. And we have stepped up in our churches. We've provided a lot of those things that I mentioned earlier. Uh, blankets and tools and missionaries and livestock and food and Christmas gifts and, you know, on and on and on. So what I'm encouraging you to do this morning is to never forget the importance of continuing with our mission in fellowship together. We are stronger together and to never, never, ever stop. Paul reminds us in Romans 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 28, all things work together for good to those who love God. That goes for people too. We all work together better when we are working together for good. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for creating this church, for sending your one and only son to teach us, to teach the apostles, and then to teach us how we should live our lives. We thank you for the scriptures, your living word, that guide us even through these difficult times. And Lord, we pray that all those who are not able to take care of themselves will find rest under the shelter of your wings. And hopefully, with our help, help us to be the church, Lord, together. And we pray all of this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Our final hymn is Take the Name of Jesus with You.
take, receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.